Hello, room. We are here, and I'm trying to get to the chat to see who's in the room. Okay, right now it's just me. We have a few. Hello, and who do we have coming in already? I think that's Pat, my lovely Pat. And okay, people are coming in. Oh, hey Pat, hey Kim, and Adrian. I don't know why it says your name's here, but it's not giving me as attendees. So we will see. Um, Pat, can you let me know that you can hear me? Am I speaking too long? Hello, darling. How are you today? How are you? It's eight o'clock in the morning. <laughs> hey, Deanna and Wendy. Wendy from New York City. Deanna from where? Jimena. Jimena, where are you calling me from? Oh, Alaska. Tanya, my uh, my boyfriend was stationed in Alaska for about three years. He talks about it very fondly. But I've never been. It's actually on my bucket list. Jimena, you're just right right around the corner in Connecticut. You're right there. Right there. Uh, Washington, D.C. Hi, Elizabeth. How are you? We're going to wait a little bit just for the room to fill up. We have a few people registering. and people are just um, getting into the room right now. So let's give them a little bit of time. So have you guys noticed the news? I keep posting on the Facebook group about the changes that are happening with the Airbnb life. Um, they just, there was an announcement not via Airbnb, but via another side, that they're allowing the creating a format for vacation rentals to be in the system a little bit more. Oh, Diana, you haven't done this before? Well, this is always the first time. You should come and say, yes, I know. Um, we'll be gentle, um, Diana. So this this thing going on, this there was this, you know, of course, it's not like we heard it from Airbnb, but it was sort of in, in the news, in other bloggers and things like that, talking about how now um, Airbnb is making things easier for vacation rental homeowners, which means more competition. I don't know how you guys have, uh, have you felt any of the competitors coming in or not. If you have, please let me know. Um, how long have you been hosting? Let's talk about that for a minute first. Hello, Deborah from South Carolina. Um, and Elizabeth, I know Elizabeth, you're so cute one hurt, unless you want it to hurt. I know, I, you know, I keep thinking that I want to like do a world tour where I go in different parts of the, of the world and we do a weekend of hosting one-on-one -on -one or, oh, Wendy, wow, seven years. Um, you know, not just one-on-one, -on -one, but like an in-depth hosting by hosts. Daniel Provencal, or Provencal, hello from Montreal. Uh, Namrata, about eight months. Jimena, four months. Elle for four years. Uh, Elle from Minnesota. Elle, is that you, my Elle? <laughs> Sue, you've been hosting for four years. We are, have a, a few people here that are, you know, from the original clan. Do you host in other places besides Airbnb? Do you use another, other places? Oh, this is your first year in vacation rentals. Congratulations. Diana, you're from Boston. Um, and we have um, Elizabeth Wendy teaches your wisdom too. <laughs> we have Wendy here. Oh yes, you are my L. Seven years L. I mean, Wendy, you must have tons of stories. You know, there's always some stories going on about Airbnb and hosting. And actually, if you doing eight years, you have more than that. Your property is in Granada, but I'm currently in Maryland. Airbnb host for two and a half years. Wow, Trev. So do you do? I guess you do a remote hosting. I know, right, Wendy? Tons of stories. I, I actually, one of the things I started to do was I am starting to feature hosts and their stories. So if any of you guys want to send me a story and we could publish it in the, on the site, um, you probably saw one from 
um, Carrie, she she was spoke about how she changed her opinion as a guest. It was the first time as a guest, and how that experience changed her outcome of guest and how she treated guests now. And you know when you know how it is like, if, especially if you live with your guest, like a lot of us do. Sometimes you have to be on all the time when when the person is not like a job that you leave and you can take off your bra and just be. When you have, when you live with strangers, you on and they come in and they want to talk and they want to chat and it changed her outcome and her view about that. So if I'm opening this up. If you want to tell your story or if you have a story you want to share with the world, please let me know and send that over to me at Evelyn at EvelynBadia.com. So it's 8.05, let's start our class. And I want to, first of all, say thank you for giving me your time i hi paul i don't take it lightly that you know i know you have busy and with other things so i just want to say thank you and i really do appreciate that you've taken this with me so i started as some of you know i started airbnb in 2010 i'm about to make my sixth year now in may and the name of my house is called eveland and this is what back when airbnb was actually been called air bed and breakfast and in 2012, I started speaking about the sharing economy to the press and that's Brian Chesky behind me because I would be so passionate about my story and how Airbnb has saved my home. In 2014, I started creating the consultation just because I spoke way too much about Airbnb to everybody. And then in 2015, I was honored to go into the Airbnb Open Conference. I was one of the host educators there, and it was really a pleasure, and I hope I get to do it again. So the disclaimer, this is not an Airbnb event. They know about me. They know that I do this, but this is not their event. This is me speaking, giving you my opinion. I would prefer it if you stop Facebooking and looking at your phone or playing Angry Birds it's angry but it's still the thing. Um, and note that you will get the percentage, the checklist. Um, since you register to the course, you will get not just this checklist of this presentation, but there's a lot of goodies on the replay page, which I will be sending out today. Okay. So you don't need to write anything, just be here, be present. All right. So tonight we want to talk about the bedroom. <laughs> I know Angry Birds is not a thing anymore. I don't know why game is a thing now. So we're going to talk about the bedroom, the bathroom, the kitchen, and the outdoors, and then we're going to have a little extra thing going on. So the bedroom, what we're going to talk about is how to go about cleaning, the upgrade, and the design. So this class is more than just spring cleaning because I want you to think about whenever you do any upgrades about how will this affect your money that you're spending and how will it affect the money that comes in and how you charge your, your guest. So on your bedroom, one of the things I want you to think about, and I know we're all in different time zones and different parts of the world, and I know here in the United States we're in a spring, and therefore that's why the spring clean challenge. But think, you know, if you're ending the high season or you're starting the high season, it's a good thing to just start fresh and rotate and flip your mattresses, vacuum them, clean them. I hope, you know, I recommend to get bed protectors, um, you know, those bed bug covers and also some waterproof covers just in case anybody spills wine or other accidents happen. So your bed is protected and you don't have to replace it. So it's good to wash them, take them off, and clean them out. Your pillows as well, and your protectors as well. Get your summer covers and rinse them out and, and give them a good launder. And when you're putting away your winter duvets, it's good to clean them as well. If either you have to dry clean them or you can wash them in your washing machine. I hope that's the option that you have because it gets so expensive. Something else to clean is not forget is the baseboard and moldings. I don't know why they collect so much dust, but they do. And it's great to just pass something, you know, wipe them down. And I do that more than quarterly just because, you know, they get they collect dust. Also, don't forget the walls, the windows. There's nothing like cleaning a window and the sun shining in. Note that we gave out a window cleaning cheat sheet. And if you did not download it, we're going to have it on the replay page. All right. So you will have access to that. 
Don't forget to clean the shades and curtains. I my curtains are dry clean, but I'm able to thankfully able to clean them on delicate wash and just hang dry them and steam them because it gets costly. And you know, do we really need to send them to the dry cleaner? Thankfully, they're not ruined or anything. The rugs and carpets, if you have any area rugs or if you have wall to wall carpets, it'll be a good thing to do a deep cleaning with them to get them ready. Also, your headboards, any furniture, photo frames, don't forget the frames above it, the radiators. If you have um, a system that is gives you air conditioned uh, central air or heat, it's great to clean out the vents and the ducts and things like that. If you have any plants in the room, clean the plant as well, take out any dead leaves and clean out the, the leaves of the plants as well. I don't know why they get so, so dirty, especially since they're indoors. If you're putting air conditioners on your windows, don't forget to clean the filters. Oh, this is my poll from Puerto Rico. <laughs> With the feather duster, we know which one it is. Um, Organize the closet. If you are providing your clients a full closet, organize it. Get rid of any unmatched hangers. I really hate, hate, hate unmatched hangers in the closet. It's such an easy and not too expensive upgrade. Don't forget to clean the ceiling fan. It's great to do it between, to put a dirty sheet underneath it so it collects any dust and you're not dirtying something cleaner. And then vacuum and mop and get that room extra clean okay now some simple upgrades okay especially since if you've been doing this for a little while and i know we have a couple of newbies that they've only been um oh you clean the ceiling fan with the pillowcase i like that idea paul thank you thank you thank you for that um a simple upgrade is check your linens look they they go through very big wear and tear especially if they're white they might not look as pristine or they might have the material might be deteriorating so you want to like make sure that they're up to par for the season because you don't want something to happen in the middle of your gas coming in and you're doing an exchange okay another simple upgrade are curtains or blinds um just to change uh, a set of blinds and upgrade them it's not a big expense they do get costly so it's something that you could do like oh just one room for now and things like that upgrades also an area rug some frames some photos some artwork and your hangers i'm i'm a big thing about that is sort of like either have wood hangers or you could have material hangers but have them so they're good quality they don't cost a lot and they say a lot about your space all right, and high cost value upgrade is either furniture in your room, the bed the size or for the comfort, repainting the, the bedroom, even though it's not a big cost, but it's a big pain <laughs> because you have to take out furniture and, and, and you have to probably shut down your room for more than 24 hours for the paint fumes and smell to go away, okay? It is better to use a higher end paint than to use something inexpensive. So, um, Elizabeth is saying that she has an ongoing issue with the bed linens being ruined frequently stained as well as body products that are bleaching comforts and blankets. I totally understand. I try to buy white linens um, just because at least I can bleach them and for the most part the body products and any makeup and things like that do come off but this is just part of the course it is just something that happens and it's going to it's going to be recurring i'm always buying sheets whenever there's a sale whenever target has a sale i buy them usually january and in august for college they have sales which is really good yeah exactly and jimena is saying about the pain is really important it's great to even just do the touch-ups have a little bit left always save a little bit of your of your paint so you could touch up any you know look whenever they open up the luggage they dig my my walls and they dirty them and i have to be repainting just touching things up so they don't look so dingy okay also you can build furniture that feels uh, for the space whether you need a desk you could either build it or you could buy it um, Or if you get Ikea, you could do some Ikea hacks So it looks a little bit different, but these are a little bit more of a bigger upgrade and I do do them um, This is an upgrade that I did a few years back. It's a small bedroom in my house 
and it used to sleep one person. It's a twin size bed. It's a single bed, and as you can see, it's a small bedroom. Um, and what we did was, someone uh, another host said, "Well, why don't you change it to a full size bed? Because then what it does, I could sleep too." The room is a little tighter, but not that much so. And what happens is it increased my income. Because I charge per person, I am able to get more money for that room. So basically, before I used to charge, for, because it was only sleeping one person, it was just a $25 a night in that room. And let's say I only book 20 nights a month. I normally book a lot more. Um, so that will be $500. With a full-size bed that sleeps two, I get a higher income. And the upgrade is paid off within a month. I made sure that I got a nice bed, and then you, of course, beyond the bed, you have to include the new linens because of the new size, the bed covers, and all those other expenses that it's just beyond just a mattress and a box cover, okay, and a box spring. So remember that there's always a lot of costs. And I might do something, uh, a class about money and your Airbnb, but that will be in the future. Now, some ideas for design are Pinterest, L, um, you know, websites and magazines, sort of like home decorating websites and how, or, you know, physical magazines. Deanna, if the screen is blurry, my recommendation, it might be your um, connection, I'm sorry to say. It will record and it, it will record actually perfectly fine. It tends to be the, the internet. <laughs> um, yeah, me, uh, Paul is saying that a memory foam topper is an excellent bedding upgrade. Exactly. I actually, what I did was I, I created a, I bought a memory foam topper for my sofa bed. So they just get really comfortable and it doesn't feel like a sofa bed at all. Now, when we're talking about inspiration for some designs, I have no sense of design. I have someone, I have a friend who is a designer and he's done my home and I'm very grateful for that. But, you know, go to House is a great website. Go to Instagram and also use, go and look at other Airbnbs. Um, you know, it's, it's just the... Um, it's, it's great to look at other Airbnbs and get ideas and things like that. All right. Now, the bathroom. And, and Paul, this is your bathroom, darling. This is Paul's bathroom, by the way, guys. I don't know if she still looks like that. But look at how great he did a frame around the mirror. And it's such a simple upgrade. And it looks, it makes the, the bathroom look higher end just because of that frame around the mirror. Okay? Now, for, to clean the bathroom and do a spring cleaning, you're going to clean the shower curtains. You're going to pull down the curtain, the liners, clean the walls. You might want to re-grout the caulk. Oh, and you could clean the garbage pail, the vents. They get dusty. It's a great thing to clean them and, and, and vacuum them. The toilet do a very deep clean and sanitize, not just the toilet, but also around the tiles and things like that. The sink the bathtub, the shower, the windows, um, the blinds, and any fixtures, whether it's the dust, dust in the bulbs or dust in the actual fixtures and things like that. All right, so let's talk about, um, I know you're asking about what is the best cleaner for the walls. Um, and Paul is saying, yeah, magic eraser is great. You have to be careful with it because it could get rid of the paint. It has on some occasion. Um, they do disintegrate. They're not they're not great to use forever, but they also take a little bit of your paint, so you have to be careful with them because it has happened to me. Um, I tend to just clean, you know, the the walls with just and you make sure you dust them before, and then just a little um, uh, uh, wipe them down with something, you know, and, and vinegar and water works well. Exactly. So you know, vinegar and water it's it's a great cleaner and. Part of the presentation that I'm providing for you guys, it's last year we did a um, cleaning like a pro class and I'm giving you all of that material as well. Exactly, nothing exotic. We don't have to go exotic, Deanna. Sometimes it's the simple things. All right, so and other things to clean are your containers for cotton swabs or Q-tips, things like that. Organize the bathroom closet, go through it and see what's needed. Do you have, you know, your... Um, hair dryer and all of the things that you want in that in that 
bathroom closet is organized and neat. The medicine cabinet, if you share this with your guests or if this is a private space um, for your guests, it's a private apartment, make sure that it's clean as well and that they have some shelves to use, all right? <laughs> Paul, you say you prefer to use crushed pearls to cleanse my walls. I love you. <laughs> Don't forget the shower head. Um, a great thing to do with the shower head is fill a bag with vinegar and you submerge it, um, the shower head in it and it just declutter it. It takes off all that, that yucky stuff. And then also clean your sink and bath up drains, okay? Just get rid of the hairs and, and just get ready for, for the busy and the long hairs to clog things up, all right? Things to replace. Towels, towels that are not looking as pristine as they used to, um, shower curtains that are stained, the liners that are not as great. Even if you wash them, I mean, because then after a certain time, you know, I have my I my liners for my shower curtains are washable, which is a great thing. I wash them and then I just put them back up and and they all dry in the bathtub. But sometimes, you know, after a year of usage, they just don't come out as great. So I do replace them every so often. Some rugs, some bathtub rugs that they're already not looking great. Also, you could replace the containers for the Q-tips and cotton swabs and things like that and, and just get something better. Okay. So simple upgrades are the shower curtains, the rugs, the containers, a better garbage pail. I even got this really pretty plunger. <laughs> you know, it's the things that that are <laughs> that are that are kind of like you're like, ooh, I want this plunger, and it's so pretty, and it's just a plunger, but it looks pretty. Okay, so it's, it was a simple upgrade for me. Now, some high cost and more upgrades for your bathroom will be repainting the walls. Again, it's a bigger pro project. Replacing tiles, you could replace the mirror or you could do what Paul did, which was like add a frame around the mirror. If it's just a simple mirror, it will look it great. You could replace, upgrade your medicine cabinet or you could do a complete renovation, okay? Yeah, I have a simple human pleasure. That's what I bought and I love it. It's so pretty. <laughs> I actually want to replace all my other plungers for that one. Um, and I do use home goods a lot. Um, we just did a big, a big upgrade in the house. We had photographs done by Flipkey. So we were getting a bunch of, and you know, spend way too much money at home goods. Now <laughs> for the kitchen, let's see what we're going to clean, replace and upgrade. All right, so in reference of cleaning, we're going to do the stove and the oven. Just make sure the spotless, that it's really clean. Give it like lift all the all the covers and things like that and really clean it well. The ventilation hood, the microwave, the inside and the outside of it. And above it, if it's, it's, if it's high up somewhere, my microwave is on top of my refrigerator. So I need to make sure that I clean on top of it. The refrigerator, the insides and the outside, the freezer part of it, take out any of the vegetable drawers and things like that. The toaster oven and the toaster, I'll make sure that it's working properly and that it's cleaned out, that any um, crumbs and things like that are taken out. Clean the dishes one more time. Sometimes, you know, the the dishwasher, my God, oh, the dishwasher gets nasty. Not just the size, but you got to clean the inside of the dishwasher. And on what we're going to give you on the replay page, I have um, how to go about cleaning those things. Clean your pots. Organize the pantry because, you know, how things get messy really quickly. Clean the cabinet interiors and actually even the exteriors, the walls, any kitchen tiles. In the sink, don't forget to clean out the sink, all right? Tables and chairs, dust the light fixtures, clean the windows and the sills, clean the ceiling fan if you have one. The garbage pails, it's great to clean them out before you clean the bathroom, put them in the tub and give them a good cleaning. Baseboards and moldings, the floors, and there's any shelving that you might have, okay? Yeah, Barkeeper's Friends is great. Um, you could also use lemon for the sink, and it cleans it up really well. All right, now things to replace in your kitchen are mismatched mugs, any chip plates or crack plates that they haven't broken yet, and you're like, oops, this needs to go out. Any broken tools, I don't know how, but my guest broke um, 
the wine opener. And that is very much needed in this household. Get rid of duplicate takeout menus. Go through it, you know, your guests sometimes bring you stuff that you're like, okay, no, we don't need that in the house, okay? Any stained containers, any worn cutting boards. Um, also make sure that you clean them really, really well. Specialty glassware, look, you might have cups from Paris and Costa Rica and all over the world, but it's better for your guests to have something that is uniform. Um, scratch Teflon pots, sponges and wipes, any kitchen towels that are not pristine or stained, it's better to replace them. Any food items, go through it, not just the food, but also like any um, oils or salad dressings and things like that. And also make sure that you have some burnout, you know, you go about burnout lights. How often do I replace sets of dishes and glasses? I know, uh, you know, Elizabeth, what I did was I did some changes in the kitchen and I'm actually going to change, show you guys that. And, and we'll talk about um, dishes and glasses. So upgrades, dishes and glasses, small appliances, pots, cutlery, storage containers. I don't know why um, forks disappear, but they do. Uh, <laughs> um, Tammy, what I do is I use my old toothbrush for the deep cleaning and then I buy myself a new one. Um, a great upgrade of flowers or just get a nice little spice rack. I, I got them for my cabinets and so they are a bit more organized. Oh great, you have some pictures and frames, some nicer shelves, the garbage pails, and again curtains and blinds and things like that. All right. Some higher end upgrades. And this will affect your pocket, but also can affect how much you charge. If you have high end appliances and you have a, your clientele are foodies, people that come in and they'll stay at your house and they like to cook, that is a great upgrade. But you have to make sure that you take into consideration how much it's gonna cost you, okay? It's great to upgrade your kitchen table and chairs, repaint the walls, probably just do a tiles and backsplash or just a countertop or a cabinet, okay? So, you know, you could do bits and pieces, um, and I know of a host that she keeps 10% of her income for upgrades and for replacement of sheets and towels and things like that. So every, every month she keeps 10% for that. Okay. So now this is my kitchen, what it used to look like before. And as you can see, it has, um, this butcher block that was my table and it was an Ikea and it worked pretty well, but it actually was not comfortable for my guests. Well, I had that for years. So what I did was I replaced it with the table. Actually, the table was given to me by my friend and I went and got some Ikea chairs. Yes, they're Ikea, but I needed, if you go back you see, I needed to move all of those things that are on behind the, this butcher block, you know, the microwave, the, the cups. And what I did was I moved them around and I went and changed things. You see uh, the far end, they are, the, the mugs are there now. So I had to, you know, adapt things around the house to fit everything else. Yeah, it's great. Look, you could get some Ikea stuff and just hack it and make it a little bit better. Um, so it doesn't look Ikea-ish, okay? Um, and this time I went and changed my mugs and they have, the, the house is very colorful house. So I, I got some mugs that are basically, you know, have a little bit of color and things like that. All right. So for the outdoor space, I am having the Airbnb group. It's here <laughs> in our, in our chat. And I love you guys. You guys are so cute. So, um, on the outdoor space, we're going to clean the gutters and believe me, I'm going through this right now. I'm cleaning, fixtures and and scrub your porch floors and your decks and the outdoor furniture organize the storage believe me my storage needs to be i need to take everything out and and throw things out and just fix it a little bit better because it's a mess clear any pathways for your guests clean the barbecue grill well if yeah, if, if i hire people i don't clean them myself i'm lazy or actually i get like you you um, if you have a pool, make sure that you clean it and the supplies or anything that you offer, the fire pit, discard any dead plants, okay? 
<laughs> I don't have a pool, Elizabeth. I wish I did. Actually, no. It would be too much work. All right. Things to replace for the outdoors is dead plants, broken furniture, check your hose, broken flower pods, anything like that that is inside, like just replace it and you know upgrade accordingly. And mind you, you don't have to do it all at once, okay? So some upgrades will be outdoor furniture, flower pots, get a better barbecue, some lights and plants. So these are things that you could go and upgrade a little bit by, by little. You don't have to do it all at once. And also you could find out who might be giving, getting rid of stuff. I'm about to pick up some outdoor furniture. They're getting rid of a hammock and they're getting rid of some outdoor furniture. Um, and I might just be replacing some of my stuff, you know. People get rid of things that, you know, they're not great for them, but it's good for you. Um, now, some extra things around the house are a safety check. Don't forget to check your smoke and carbon monoxide detectors. Change the batteries, okay? Once a year, change those batteries and make sure that you get, you know, you get them running well. The washing machine, you need to clean it at least one um once every three months or so and we use the washing machine a lot so I, I clean it a little bit more than that and it's just run it with some vinegar or you run it with bleach either way um don't mix the two together all right it's either or clean the dryer and the vent clean the vacuum cleaner believe me i use mine and i have to clean it out almost all the time dust radiators and vents throughout the house and don't forget to oil your door hinges and windows um, I do keep a couple of things that creak just because it makes me know like, oh, the guests are going to the bathroom. It then means that if I need to go, I go to another one. All right. So things to replenish and to have in hand, especially look, you get into the high season. The worst part is like you have to clean and you don't have the cleaning supplies. You need toilet paper and you don't have enough. So it's great to just stack up, have it somewhere where your guests do not have access for it because if they do they'll use it all up so i get extra toilet paper shampoo conditioner soaps um cereals jams peanut butter some extra towels and sheets because i will go through them this is something that you know i might not need today but i know that in the middle of july i'm going to be needing it so believe me there's toilet paper galore in this house okay so it's great for you to just have extra stock up because you're going to use it. And it's not something that is going to go bad. All right. Now, an extra back up your computer. My computer, I was doing something silly and it got wet and it fried my hard drive. Thankfully, it, um, it backs up automatically. So I was able to just get a new hard drive and back up and I didn't lose anything. I also do um a lot of i use a lot of google documents so everything is in the cloud and it's now living in my computer declutter your digital documents go through it and just clean it out if you see my desktop right now it's really a mess but i need to clean it out unsubscribe from email list that you don't go through them anymore except this one because you are here so why would you you know unsubscribe Organize and delete images. You know, we're it's so easy with our smartphones to take photos. And sometimes it's like, why am I keeping these photos? I have five photos of the same thing. Okay. And update your passwords. There's a few sites out there that you can have that you could use and do one password and they're safer. Um, I keep my passwords in a document, you know, somewhere out there in the world. But, you know, update your password, update your Airbnb password. Remember that the hackers are coming in through Airbnb. There's a lot of stuff happening there, and I want you to be safe. Um, so make sure you go through your Airbnb um, account and that you see who is coming in, where is the account being um, opened up or anything like that, okay? And don't click on anything. Um, so now I want you to not become overwhelmed about creating you know of this cleaning task i want you to think about it and split the jobs think about one thing or one room or just to the bed in the room because it takes times and sometimes like you know for me and now i'm i'm like one guest comes in and this the same day i have a guest arriving uh leaving and arriving the same day so 
if I need to change mattress covers and pillows and things like that, I need to make sure that I have extra to re to, you know, if I have a day in between, so that's the day that I'll take out the mattress covers, I, I wash them, I dry them, and then I put them back on the next cleaning. So, you know, think about the jobs you could do one at a time and don't become, don't overwhelm. And that's what I do also, which is point number two, get the help. You know, getting that extra cleaning person that comes in on the days that you're doing a deep cleaning, between the two of you, you could do a lot more work. Don't do all at once. It will be, you know, detrimental. You'll be tired. You'll be cranky. And, you know, it's just not, and it's not worth it. Um, you could just do, like, one of the things I do is I clean the windows per room. Like, first I'll clean the big bedroom windows. There's three of them. The next time I have to clean, I'll clean the next windows in the kitchen. And then I'll clean the one in the other bedroom. So, like, that is not all. I'm not doing them all at once because I just don't have the time. I only have a very small period of time that I have access to that space, okay? So, one once that task is done, go on to your next task, okay? Now... I want you to be calm when your next guests walk in. I want you to be confident. I want you to just feel that you've done the best that you can. So you're more than welcome to come over and pick my brain. I We could talk about maximizing your price. I know that Airbnb is creating all of these price tools and things are very complicated right now. Um, I change my prices basically almost daily just to make sure that things, especially with now with more competition, what photos and captions i'm doing a class next week about that but we could talk very much in depth about yours that is the first thing that people see that's the reason why people go and stay in your place is because of your photos okay we will talk about headlines and names and how can we call your place and how can we do marketing better um house rules we'll talk about that do you have any and if or you have too many and they're scaring people away and much more. We could talk anything about Airbnb that you want to talk about. So, you know, you could pick my brain. You also get the house manual, which I sell separately. But with this, um, I get, um, you get it as part of the consultation. You get a house manual, which is basically step-by-step -step instructions. You get the template of the house manual, the neighborhood, and the transportation template. Um, this is what it looks like. Um, at least this is my book. This is exactly how my, my book looks like, but it's very formatted. It's very pretty, and it's all designed for you, okay? Now, you're also going to get a 10% off if you decide to book now. So you get 10% off, you get the house manual, and you get to talk to me just for your space, all right? So thank you, and now we're going to open up some question. I know, Elizabeth, you have something here. You have a question here, and we're going to talk about it in a minute. Let me just stop the presentation and you could see me and my hair is a little messy it's dark over here in new york okay so the pricing tool that i use i am actually using airbnb's tool i go through it um a few times at least once a day and i go through <laughs> thank you paul um, I actually had a really rough day today but thankfully that of my job that we are airbnb host um, I know the price that I have and I know the price that I used to have. So I, and I keep track of that. Um, I, during the slow season, I went low, but I was able to be booked and that's what I need. I need, you know, it pays my mortgage, it pays my bills. So there's a certain amount of money that I need to make. Some people are like, oh, I don't want to go that low. I'm giving it away. And it's like, I understand, but it is a thing. It's a home. It's your home, and you have this emotional attachment to it. And we give so much for a hose, and I mean for a gas and everything else, and we do so much. But it's either sitting there and not giving, making you money, or you're making some money with it. So it's either or. Look, the competition has grown huge. It's really in New York, it's super, super busy. And you know, you see Airbnb that all they're doing is promoting for more house to come in and more house to come in. And now with this whole vacation rental people coming in, I'm I'm sort of a little concerned about it. Um so we stay booked like you and get twice the amount of Airbnb suggests. Exactly. Look, if you're still doing that, that's fine. 
um, what you have to do is sort of, what I do is I have my prices are high the further away they are. Like, let's say my July prices, my August prices. But for May right now, because we're already entering May, I'm already lowering a little bit of the prices or going a little bit low just to see. I was, I had blocked um, a few weeks in May because my mom was coming. So now I just open them up and I'm late in the game because I know a lot of people have already booked for me, but the prices, I'm still keeping them the same way, but I'm also making deals with more people. I'm willing to go lower, accept more people. Like I had a four day squeeze on a weekend and I had a previous, I had a previous guest asking me for it, but they want a really low pricing. And I said, no. And then I got somebody else that wanted and it's so I got more money for it, but you know, I still gave them a little discount. But now Tammy, let me ask you a question. You have to pay with that pricing tool. So you're paying a percentage and then the question becomes, is it worth it? Um, we, Paul, we will talk about um, third party platforms. I will not discuss that today just because it's already 840. Cleaner people, yes, yes, Elizabeth, you are absolutely right. People will be better as guests um, with a, pri a higher price than a lower price. They are. Um, you're not getting the bargain hunters. But look, Paul, I am on, um, you know, I don't know PM pricing. I mean, we could have a class with them if you guys want that. Okay, you know what, Tammy, maybe we could have Alex on a class of our pricing tools. <laughs> Because I don't do them. I don't use them. I use, you know, I know what I need and I want, I, you know, it's also the question about, I mean, Alex's house, it's magnificent. It's in San Francisco and it's amazing. Um, and, you know, it, it's, it's a great house. My concern is, for example, I don't offer certain things that they have. So if my price is too high, am I going to be dinged on value? And there's also so much more competition, you know. Um, Elizabeth, I know Tammy and I have talked about doing a, a world tour and talking, doing some conferences where we could just talk about it. Um, this is the best I could do is basically webinars or, or classes like this. And, you know, we could do some town hall meetings. Um, when we went to San Francisco, we I was I stayed at Tammy and Alex's and it was great. We, we, chatted with some people and everything else. I know Paul. Hey, I need to go to Puerto Rico. That's my hometown. So any questions, my dears? Anybody wants any questions? Anybody wants me to see their space? You have to be brave for that one. I will pick two people. If you give me your URL, you got to make it easy for me. Um, yeah, we were talking about going down to Baltimore at one point um, with Jeanette and, and things like that. Oh, come on, Paul. You are an excellent, excellent host. You want to give me your listing? Go ahead. You know, show it to me. Show it to me and I'll, and I'll, and I'll give you some, some stuff. Exactly. Paul is already perfect. It will be wasted on Paul. <laughs> oh, yeah, he wants to, of course he wants to show off his place. His place is amazing. Okay, how do you present the little gifts to you guys and what do you give them? I, what I do is I don't give gifts. I give them some food items. Um, one of the things that they always talk about is my house menu, which it is for sale on my side, but... They love it. It has tons and tons and tons of information and is a great tool where for people, for the guests to feel um, empowered because it was the only one getting, that got us four stars. Oh, okay. So how many rooms do you have, Elizabeth? Um, and is it, and then are you renting the room? Is the room just sitting there not making you money or is it because of the four stars that you decided to get out? Because, I mean, it's money, you know. And, guys, you know, I know we're all very busy thinking about our – well, look, next week we're going to talk about photos, okay. 
Well, Jimena, we're going to do photos next week, so come over to the class. And actually, one of the classes on Wednesday's class, and this time next week, we're actually going to have a photographer talking as well, okay? All right, so Marilu, let me go to Marilu's because she was fast. Wow, okay, this is a magnificent place. Let me share it with you guys so you can see it. So uh, your preview to it. All right, check this out, guys. And Paul, don't worry, I, I'll be, I'll be talking, I'll be looking at your space next. We're only doing two, guys. Elizabeth, no one, I guess, does not know what is a super host. We're so concerned about super host, and I've asked guests that are experienced guests that have done that use Airbnb and they've done it, um, all of that, and they don't know what is a super host. Okay, very rare that have I heard what's the super host so it doesn't really matter if that room was giving you money i will say go for it all right this is a beautiful amazing place and i'm gonna see oh this is in the philippines look pat 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 oh my dearest assistant is from the philippines this is wow all right so it sleeps it has four bedrooms 12 gas eight beds all right um this is really magnificent let's see okay okay so one of my my biggest um my biggest suggestion is you see how you have your main photo here which then people are going to click to the second one and then you have five photos here on your listing page on your front page you want these photos to be of different rooms just because People will see this, and what they're seeing is basically the same thing over and over again, okay? Now, you have 34 photos, and this is a big, big house, so let's start looking at it. Um, this is a good photo of the front of the house, but I will go a little closer, just so that I could see a little bit more of your home and not the houses next to it, okay? Um, and this is a great photo. I mean, you have a great front photo. I mean, I love it that you have the piano there. This That's a great extra for gas um and this is basically you just giving us a different angle um this is again the same photo now is this a different living room because now i guess this is a family room okay so what i'm gonna recommend for you that have so okay this is a separate like a, a a family room from the living room okay got it this is really a high-end house this is beautiful um okay my recommendation in reference of an upgrade it will be if this is your refrigerator it doesn't match the house this is a very small refrigerator for such a glamorous home oh no you have another one here okay i i take me back okay so my recommendation you have a lot of photos you will need a floor plan um because people will get lost in the images um and because you have such a high-end home at the beginning okay do you have a swimming pool wow okay okay so i guess it's the kind of location and things like that all right let me go back um i'm just gonna go back to a couple of photos here um your house is very high-end and very beautiful Oh, okay, so it's a clubhouse swimming pool. Um, this is a big room, and I'm wondering, um, in reference of the space, okay, I'm going to go back, back, back. Okay, this room. I will upgrade this room a little bit more just because it doesn't give you the glamour that the rest of the house gives you. So maybe blinds or curtains um, and things like that. Some art on the walls would be good, a little splash of color. And, and retake, I know this is a verified photo, but you could retake some photos. As long as you keep one or two photos from Airbnb, you are more than well, you know, you could change some of them if you upgrade the house, okay? So, they're super host listing on their, their host and they're non super host listing under his name. They did this to retain their, do I agree with Evelyn that super host is no? Yeah, oh, Tammy, that's a great idea, but yeah, you could have two different listings, two different people, and like that, you, you know that, um that you can still make money on that property i am not on property it is a type 
kind of generic welcome note okay yes yes you know what you could do but see you can also just do handwritten notes without the name of the person <laughs> or you can mail them if you know who's coming ahead of time and just say hi blah 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 thank you for blah 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 and this and that so so you could always do that that's always a great thing for people to get paul congratulations on becoming an airbnb certified photographer in new york puerto rico needs it okay he never had time then i got booked and i said forget about it but my pictures are just okay my phone does not do what other ideas you guys can give me he met us so we're going to talk about photos next week um let me get to paul's beautiful home and this was great this is really beautiful house by the way um congratulations all right you know paul is just he just wants you guys to see a magnificent place in puerto rico all right let's talk about this I don't know what else. What can I say, Paul? You just, you have a hundred, over a hundred reviews. You have five star. You have super hoes. Come on. You know, you have different photos of your rooms. Okay, so let's talk about this. All right. Your first photo is great. It just, it provides you and gives you that fantastic feeling of luxury and comfort. Look at those iron sheets. Man, I need you here in New York. <laughs> you know <laughs> oh god yeah that's that's a good one i see it's tiny insects okay this is a great photo this is so fantastic it, it gives you a great image of your entire space you know i love your bathroom I, i'm actually featuring it here and look oh you change the frame around your bathroom i need that new picture and look i mean before it was white and look what a great little pop of color and it just how magnificent it is and it's just look at how organized the towels are and all of that and that just provides it's they're just not stacked there it provides a comfort and luxury feeling okay again a beautiful photo of the space um i will probably okay i don't know if you need this photo of the kitchen of the bathroom just and i have to i'm saying that just because i need to say something okay um you do have a lot of um repeat photos i will put this a forward um earlier and of course you have photos of the market i don't know if this is a great photo of the of the supermarket um you know it's a puerto rican market which i know i mean it's just you know it doesn't add a lot to the space um i will probably put one of your like the great restaurants we went to together i don't know if you have it here i don't think you do but i would do one or two of the photos yeah no birds i have the sink i know right yay okay now i know what this is this is your countertop you cannot tell what this is my love oh and i love how, you know i love that you did this but you cannot tell from this angle what this is um so my recommendation is not to show it or to show it at a different angle okay um you have a lot of repeat photos so i would say you could probably eliminate some and keep others um yeah that would be my only recommendation. I know you, I think you provide robes, so we'll have a photo of that, okay? Again, you have a, it's La Hacienda. <laughs> I love you. In case I see no more photos of Granada in my listing. Yes, have photos of your neighborhood, of your surroundings, and things like that. Don't have a lot. Remember, people are there. Um, my recommendation is for a bedroom. If you're, um, sharing your space with your guests and it's only a bedroom 20 photos is more than enough because after that they're not even going to remember they're not really going to look at it or anything like that two to three photos of the room of different angles and different things i pull i don't know if you have a photo here of your um desk so i'm going to say get a photo of the desk you see, I, I see the corner of the chair, but I'm not seeing, you know, I'm seeing a little bit of the desk, but I will probably have a photo of that. Um, I will add that one to it, okay? Any other questions, my dears? It is 9 o'clock. It's almost 9 o'clock. Any questions? Dun, dun. Yeah, next week is going to be great.
Yes, yes, Paul. The desk vanity in the bedroom, add, add a photo of that because you have it only of the angle, so it doesn't really, you cannot really tell. I know what it is, but I would say just, you know, get a, a shot of that. It went too quickly. The hour went too quickly. <laughs> Trav, if you want to talk more to me, you're more than welcome to book me. I'm not that expensive. Um, okay, so questions. Deanna, talk to me. How do, uh, how do you keep your fridge so shiny? Who says it's shiny? Oh, yeah, actually, it is clean. I clean it. That's all. Where do you give your feedback on your website? Um, where do we give you feedback on your website? You want to give me some feedback? Just send me an email and tell me what I need to do. I'm actually changing my website. The website is getting changed. It's getting a whole new thing, new look and feel about your house manual. Did I miss it? Oh, Carol, house manual is class number four. So it's in three more weeks. Not yet. The best ideal number of photos. It depends on how much, how big your space is, but see, if you are... Oh, for advertising for you. Oh, my God, I love you. Yes, you could. Just use my name. Um, we're talking about the ideal number. Of, but see, do you share your space or is it a private apartment? Is it a full place? I usually, my recommendation is three photos per room. And make each photo be different. Don't give me three photos of the same side of the bed. Um, if you're doing a bedroom, so, um, if you see, let me just show you my list in a minute. Um, and mind you, I'm, my photos, I get, I just got redone by a photographer yesterday, which is the reason for ironing the sheets. And if you don't know about me and ironing the sheets, you have to be on Facebook to know about this. Um, let me just show you. And mind you, I am redoing photos and I haven't redone them just because, I wanted to do it doing the challenge. All right, let me just show you my listing. And please be be, be kind, be kind with me. I don't know she says God works beyond that. Okay, so this is my first, and as you can see, it's a bright apartment. It has green and it has a lot of color. Um, and so that's my first photo. That's the second one. So I have 20, and this is a two-bedroom apartment. And the reason why I have the um, the photos like this where you have different rooms and I have a layout. So if you are providing a space that is private, like the house that we just saw, you need to do a, a layout of the house so people do not get confused of what's what and what's where. This does not have the uh, dimensions. I will put it in eventually, but I haven't. Um, but yes, it's a great thing to do. So this, you see this photo is changed and, and it's ugly, it's dark. I'm, that's why the new photographer, um, you know, and I just have a few. And then this is, I go back now to the big bedroom showing things of it. A nice little feature, which is the headboard, some, you know, some things of the room, which has a little bit of the bed, but it's a different angle. Then the living room set up as a sofa bed, just so that people know, because I get a lot of people that rent everything. And as you can see, it has the old table, so I need to, I'm changing that. And then you have the kitchen, the bathroom, and I added the stairs because of somebody was asking me. I also have direction, a photo of a map on how far I am from the train station for people to ask. My street, a highlight of I want you to remove your shoes just a little thing of welcome and then a couple of things about the neighborhood and the house that's it very simple I don't complicate things um Tammy the layout is floor planners and I mentioned it in um in one of my marketing Mondays and I'm going to mention it I'm going to do all the resources on next week's class because that's one of the things we're going to talk during the the class of photos is sort of like how to go about doing your your floor plan and all the important things that you should have on your photos. Thank you. Tiana, you know, what happens is I have people with mobility issues and I need to make sure that they're clear of what they're getting. But new photographer shot yesterday and I'll be getting new photos. Yay. All right, guys, it is almost nine o'clock. And I just want to say again, thank you for staying with me. Thank you for chatting. I know we, we should do this more often, but we don't. Um, and if you have any questions, just, you know, send me an email, go to Facebook, 
Um, Pat, if you can just give them the Facebook um, link. I am there. I've created a group for us on the Spring Clean Challenge. And the group will live long and prosper. It's all about Airbnb. It's a very simple room um, group. But, you know, we just talk way too much about Airbnb. You know it. We're all obsessed about this. And, you know, somebody has to talk to you about dirty towels and dirty sheets and the things that are guests to. Okay? So, again, thank you so much, guys. And I will see you next week at the same time. All right. Bye-bye.